So hello everyone, thank you for attending this session. Um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, this is a very new session uh, which I'm presenting, uh, which is about the complete OLI or observability stack for your web application. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm really thankful to be here. Even before we come to end, I really want to thank Linux Fest uh, that they accepted my proposal and invited me here for the talk. So really excited and very first time here in the state. So yeah. So um, about me, so my name is Usman. Um, I work in Grafana Lab as a senior developer advocate. And um, basically that means that I work very closely with the open source community on Slack or discourse forums, also a lot on GitHub, and try to help them write documentation or create content and so on. And also present on these uh, conferences when there's time. And uh, previously, my background has always been working with Linux. I started my career more like a technical support guy, but ramp up to using some cloud services, but still yeah, uh, doing a lot of those things. And yeah, uh, beside work, uh, I'm, from, uh, I'm from Germany. I have a small family there. So it was a nice flight. I, uh, 10 hours didn't feel that much. But when I landed here, then I fall asleep in a matter of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, beside work, I have a family, uh, do some stuff. But uh, as a hobbyist, I have also my YouTube channel. I like to write a lot, so I write articles and create videos. And uh, you can scan or just visit my GitHub to view everything and know about me in, yeah, in more detail. So let's get started. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, observability for your web application. Um, and we go through like some scenarios, uh, how it feels like, how it was before. How is it now? And uh, what are the complexities? What are the challenges? And we will take a look more into it. So let's, let's take a look about the history of web applications. So uh, we used to have, back in the days, very basic, like client server model. You have one, one server, and everything works fine. And you are happy. You say, like, hey, honey, all done. I'm coming home. And the kids are happy. And you say, no more phone calls, and things work fine. Obviously, it was back in the days that works, but uh, uh, yeah, you may have some few additional things, a load balancer or so, but it was very basic back in the days. N not so much required or was not people aware of like why they need more services or more uh, servers. So, and now it broke. <laughs> I think so. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just scared me. <laughs> so yeah, you have one one application, and you say, "Hey, everything works fine, all good, no serious issues." Then uh, people talk around technologies getting involved. We come to the world of containeri containeri uh, containerization, uh, which is mostly started from Docker, right? So in Docker world, you have like, uh, it solves a lot of challenges that uh, you don't need so many virtual machines. All you need is like a one machine where you can deploy your web application, your database, your cache server, and so on. Like depends on your complexities of your application, but you have like Docker solve most of the thing and use Docker file or uh, build, build your own image and so on. And you can do uh, this more uh, in more detail. We are just taking a look like how a microservices architecture look like. Uh, so then we have some more uh, <coughs> advancement come, which is the Kubernetes, uh, which is fun to say, but more challenging and more costly as well. But it's also solved a lot of things, uh, which Docker could not, because uh, there are uh, some scaling issues or uh, so, uh, some container orchestration, which are were not so good in Docker, so K8 helps. And this is just a just an example, like how in Kubernetes uh, things look like when you try to uh, uh, deploy your application and what you think of as the basic necessity. It it is it should not be like that's the state of the art uh, example, but giving you just some idea. So this is how it's supposed to be looked like. Um, 
Okay, I see it's the GIF, so it's yes. flickering. Okay. So now you have applications everywhere, and then you are in a process, okay, now we have so many applications, how we can monitor it? Like you were in a mindset like, okay, how to observe them, right? So you say, hey, no problem if something is on fire or something broke, you know what? I can scale them up and I will have more problem solved. Right? Yeah, it, it does. It does. You are still happy. You say like, I'm, it's, it's five o'clock, I'm going home. That's the end of the job. <laughs> right? So, but then you go home and you realize, oh, those are also broken. What the hell should I do now? Okay. And, uh, and yeah, this keeps going and going and you're in a loop now. Okay. You can scale up the application, but you need to fix the root cause where this all is happening. Right? So, then frustrations comes like what should i do like we have maybe one single <laughs> monitoring tool we we were supposed to monitor like the application one two three four we forgot to route them for the server five six seven eight it, it happens i i'm in tech support i i been in tech support i know this these things happens and yeah you you know, you're angry and you're frustrated and then you realize like you're in a deep mess <laughs> right so this is where we we see that uh, the whole picture like this happens every day in some cases of your like maybe your application is small or on a production level where it's there's there's no downtime should be required but it happens and this is where we can see like how to observe it so what is the observability stack we can use as a complete one the one complete observability stack so uh, when we talk about observability, we, we, we understand that uh, it stands on three pillars. So it is known as logs, metrics, and traces. Logs are very simple to understand, like every application should give a log, maybe basic or debug level or info level. Metrics gives you more information, for example, how, uh, how many users may be using per CPU usage or the, what application is doing inside, how many sessions are uh, uh, been uh, running. Metrics can be a, a good example, could be like if everyone probably knows Apache server and if you look at just the Apache server configuration, it is like a metric, like you define like how many concurrent sessions you want, how many workers node you want and so on. And you can get all this uh, like as an example of metrics in your case. And this is our app. So for logs, we have something called in Grafana, we'll call Loki. Loki is a product by Grafana. It is open source. But just for the record, everything right now we are talking is available as open source. It's not like you have to pay. Obviously, there are versions of it. But if you run on your own, everything is free. So Loki is a product by Grafana which is just for logs. So you can uh, monitor all your logs in a single place. Uh, you may have like five to 10 servers, but you just tell them like, hey, this is my Grafana server and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, redirect all the logs there. And then we see like what we can do more. Similar for metrics. Uh, for metrics, it is very common to say something uh, as uh, application like Prometheus. So Prometheus is very known to, uh, as, uh, to collect metrics. Uh, you can use Pro Prometheus or you can use Mimir, M for Mimir. So uh, it is also by Grafana. Very similar, like 99% I would say to Prometheus. The only one thing is that which Prometheus does not provide is the storage pro. So it, it provides you the st storage option which Prometheus does not have or can be very costly. So yeah, this is what we were just talking about that uh, Grafana can read all of this. So you have now log and metrics, and this is your application which is sending logs and collecting uh, both of it. Now we come to the part of traces. So traces is basically log plus. So traces can be explained like at a particular event in your application when a crash happened, where you wanna take a look like, and logs help, but uh, with traces you can identify at which particular time or which which span the span which where it occurred so traces is something like very uh, if your application is have this capability or you need then yeah traces is good otherwise sometimes you don't need traces it depends 
on on the complexity of your application and similar uh, yeah grafana can read traces as well okay and sorry for this error it's a little bit off the word but then we come to the last part profiling profiling is the fourth pillar of observability field so it is something still uh, people say like it is it is not but nowadays you can say yeah there are four pillars of observability for sure with this profiling and profiling means like continuous profiling we have a product called uh, pyroscope pyroscope uh, does the profiling what it means by profiling so imagine you have a web app, java based app web application right you you are you you have some libraries running it and you did some customization but for the front end user when they load the application there are some downtime or lagginess like it's taking a lot of time you can't get uh, that much detail uh, by logs or metric but with profiling you can get like which library of that particular code where it is taking a lot of time and you can pinpoint it and uh, check it out okay where do we need the improvement in the code which uh, which can speed up the front end experience of the user and of the whole application as well so this is known as uh, profiling and the product is called uh, pyroscope so uh, yeah that's uh, that's the whole picture right now and uh, why grafana so yeah uh, that's a good question in my opinion like there are many other tools like there are like tools uh, good tools like dynatrace or datadog or uh, uh, some some other more players in the market which are emerging but i think one question which we can honestly say that when it comes to open source and uh, you want a whole stack that it's not like just two parts of the product is open source and the rest you have to purchase or buy then there's only one main player which is grafana because it provides the whole complete open source stack for your application whether you want to do monitoring uh, for uh, uh, for metrics or check the logs or traces or profiling th th there is one more which we're going to see at the end uh, it's not part of the demo or the talk but uh, at least we can discuss a little bit more and this is a very cool picture so uh, this is the whole grafana uh, product stack we call so at the very front you see you can see a uh, full dashboard visualizations which is coming from some sort of a data source it could be anything maybe it could be from um, github or salesforce or maybe um, dynatrace or maybe just from prometheus I'm a bit imagining why, why there is no Prometheus, which is okay, but yeah. Uh, and then what we have here is that this is something like uh, your application and uh, which provides you uh, uh, um, um, so this is your appli uh, application running and you have all these uh, uh, data sources which, uh, which you can configure with your application. Maybe your application is a GitHub uh, data source base or Prometheus base or whatever, doesn't matter. And you can use either one of the collector uh, agents like uh, uh, Prometheus, Open Telemetry, or Fluent, and this is the whole stack. So this is exactly what we just talked about, that Loki for logs, Grafana for visualizations, Tempo for traces and meaning for metrics and the last but not least is the pirate score and this is uh, just just a very high level overview inside uh, there is a lot going so if we these are the core application you need to observe your application okay you need logs for Loki but there might be something more for example if you application needs some performance testing we have a product called like k6 which is for load testing and browser testing that also generates some sort of data like metrics and logs and then you can integrate loki with that k6 again it's uh, there is one part of it is totally open source then we have some uh, other areas where which are very new for example we have eppa so yeah uh, uh, um, for application observability uh, uh, 
I'm not an expert on eBPF. Uh, it's like something where you use with kernel, Linux kernel to get some more uh, metrics and data. Similarly, if you need a specialized area like Kubernetes or cloud application, we have those as well. And last but not least, uh, we have also support for different sort of alerting like an application for on-call or incident and so on. And when you combine all this in one, then this is the whole Grafana Labs as a picture, like what Grafana Labs provide you as a whole complete observatory stack. So, yeah. Now we come to the demo. So I have actually uh, one demo which I will run and we will go through with it. It's very basic one. And the second one I can explain. Um, I was not... Uh, I don't have it set up, but uh, I can definitely explain how it works. So the demo, which I will first uh, explain, uh, just, just took it like three minutes ago from internet. So very bad image and everything is not 100%, uh, but yes, this is what I have also on my local machine that I have some Docker containers ready. And the uh, demo is based on a, like a WordPress, which is a PHP application, it's fine. Uh, as long as we get some metrics and data, so what I have exactly, Prometheus, uh, 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 Grafana, C Advisor, because it's uh, for getting the C groups data, Node Exporter, and MySQL. And uh, um, this is how it looks like. So these are the uh, images which I am running. Let me just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... There's a lot of uh, containers running inside of it um, uh, and how it looks like. So let's try. Okay, so this is the home page of a WordPress application. WordPress everyone knows or use somewhere. Uh, it could be Java. I just for this uh, talk, I just use WordPress as a basic example, which is uh, I think it's it's good, easy, very easy to understand and understand the whole concept. So it has some post somewhere. So um, I have created like a couple of posts just to show that there's like three posts, uh, two with title. Actually, one one three posts where one have no title, which is okay. But uh, it is running, okay? It is running on a container image and uh, it is generating some sort of data. And for WordPress, what you need, uh, definitely you need a database because it saves everything in the database. And now you will be interested like, okay, my application is running. I can definitely, if it is running on uh, Docker, it can run on Kubernetes. I can scale it up. But then the big question comes like, can I observe it? Can I monitor it on a more bigger level? Yes, you can. And how? So um, we have this so we have grafana server running on the same uh, machine and uh, we have some dashboards here so the very first dashboard is the c advisor uh, which uh, is telling like how many cpus it, cpu and memory like all the metrics reg regarding to the container is providing the details uh, and uh, it's showing all the dashboard and all the container information was going on what's not since it's just like a very basic one so not that much load but uh, yeah it, it's there and uh, similarly the next thing we talk about is the uh, um, um, for the uh, database for example so um, so we have right now one single MySQL server. <coughs> so it's telling, okay, the instance is up, uh, it's running, there's the uptime and so on. And you can use, obviously, uh, if you have more, you can get all of the metrics there as well. If you have a cluster, MySQL, uh, uh, something like that. We have some more dashboards uh, if you want to see the whole process list. So uh, it is giving you all the details, what, what is running, what query are being executed and so on. And this is all uh, all nice. One, one thing which I wanted to say, uh, which is also one part of the talk is that how you can create such dashboard. Maybe you have time or maybe you're in a hurry. So luckily in Grafana, uh, you don't need to 
do that much effort so uh, if you go to grafana.com slash uh, dashboards we have a dashboard almost for everything so we have a collection of dashboard um, so some of you may be using AWS as an example so we have uh, dashboards for AWS RDS or Lambda whatever and I use also dashboards from here so which is very easy um, you can just copy the ID and just import the dashboard here. so these dashboards are most mostly taken from here from the community basically and you can use it as well and um, yeah and this is uh, then the part of the dashboard for the WordPress so I said that we have uh, some not much but some things are running inside like three posts so total number of comments like there are two comments so it's telling we have two uh, comments for the application we have three uh, articles published and that's the total DB size and so on so again it can be more bigger more broad depends on your use case you can easily do it I'm running all this on a free open stack I'm not using anything so you can ob obviously do that as well now we can come to the one more important part is the logs so we have also logs at one place so all these containers are generating different logs we have logs for the um, for the WordPress from the other uh, side we can also log about Grafana I'm logging about what, what uh, the prompt tail uh, or the Loki what they, it is doing what is fetching from so you can log at all the entries at one place as well so it's pretty easy and very convenient that now you have everything in one place you can monitor almost each and everything so that's the one part one of the demo part two is using uh, this link uh, which I have already opened it's called intro to L uh, MLTP which means like intro to matrix uh, uh, log spaces and and Prometheus this is then the whole big picture because in my case I'm not uh, NP for sorry for P for profiling so apologies so this is the whole picture because in my WordPress application I cannot do the profiling because it is not a built-in feature you have to instrument it which is take a bit effort and time but if your application has profiling uh, uh, feature available and you can instrument it then uh, you can easily do it this is here in sample application and you can go to this uh, repo and simply uh, do a like a, a docker composer and log into the grafana default like localhost 3000 and you can see all all those dashboards regarding logs matrix traces and profiling and you can learn it if you feel want to learn a bit more you can also check some more uh, dashboards about traces or or metrics on our playgrafana.com or playgrafana.org so yeah so going now to the last part so yeah so at the very end how the whole picture looks like so this is how it looks like you have an application okay you are collecting logs metrics traces profiling everything and you can also do one more thing which is called k6 we, we just discussed that you can do load testing of it to see how your application works improve it just provide the api endpoint and you will get all the data and again you can simply use grafana because grafana can read all those things as well so the final takeaways uh, we can uh, we can talk about is that the availability in many flavors so grafana is available whether you're running it locally kubernetes or on cloud or you just want to manage yourself you can do it obviously you can go for more like uh, cloud paid versions if you have like more uh, 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 bigger uh, uh, applications which you need a big uh, like real-time support yeah but it is almost available in every way depends on your use case second is definitely the rich uh, features so grafana provides 
what we just saw in the big picture that it has everything but uh, uh, beside that it has a very big and strong community support so if you maybe say like hey this is cool i can run grafana locally but what about the support part so there is definitely very good community support where you can ask questions around and definitely get good help around it as well and last but not least that what we just saw that it is a complete open source stack for almost everything you can have a basic application where you need just logs or you can go up to profiling and case six for load testing and all you need is grafana you don't run to into issue that for one part of your application you're running grafana for other you're using datadog or dynatrace and then you have this licensing problem or issues you know just one place where you where everything is integrated for you and you just need to use it for your for your use case for your application if you want to get involved, um, definitely uh, these are some good sources like the Grafana GitHub repo. And uh, the other sources of the community is the Grafana Slack channel, which is around 10,000 users. So it's, it's pretty big now. It's very hard to sometimes answer everyone, can imagine. And uh, last but not least, definitely the, our community form, which is uh, really active and can help you a lot if you want to learn Grafana as well. And uh, just before ending, so I have one more session where I will be talking about today around this time, uh, which is more about how to use most of the Grafana feature, which is titled as Level Up Your Grafana Skills. So if you have time, please feel free to join there as well. And uh, you can scan this QR code if you want to get uh, all the documentation and all the links which we have used uh, saw in these slides. So yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Any questions? I got one. Yeah. So uh, I know it's not on the technical side, but I saw a little flash thing of uh, connecting to Jira. Mm -hmm. So are you able to connect? Uh, connect into their API and get all the card data. Yes, or? yes. So uh, we have um, we have a data source plugin for Jira, where you can just install the plugin, and uh, uh, we have the whole documentation for it. So, but it's very easy. Just install the plugin. Just point maybe the endpoint and the token, mm -hmm. and that's it. So then you can get the data uh, from Jira in Grafana, and depends. You want to view it in a dashboard or not the safest bet, but you can also do like uh, uh, display it on a website externally uh, uh, embed, Im using embedded link. Or uh, yeah, it depends. The, or if you want to mo use the safe approach that you want to use Jira, but display it as a publicly, we do have a feature which we talk later in, uh, in the afternoon session, how to use public dashboard. Basically it means like you created a dashboard, just press this button like uh, make it public no need to assign permissions or security issues it will be public to anyone even those who are not using uh, uh, Grafana or Jira mm -hmm. so yeah oh. cool. yeah please. <coughs> maybe you're gonna cover this this afternoon but uh, so I, I have a question now because a lot of the time you, know, you work from home these days or mm -hmm. some other place and uh, and now we've got quite a few of the apps which are actually installed on your machine or are pushed to you. They're progressive web apps. They're actually running in, in your browser or in the tree structure underneath your browser. So I, <clears throat> sometimes you can't get a hold of support, your admin support to say why an app is not working. Can you, in the same way you can use Google Chrome tools to kind of look at your own profile of your browser to see what's going on in your browser. Is there any sort of Graphene dashboard you can install to kind of do your own administrative observation or reverse the reverse the administrator? So, um, so uh, I think there is uh, there is definitely a way. So the K6 part which we saw, it's a load testing tool, but K6 not just alone. There is a one part of product known as Flare, which do what you are saying that uh, like uh, profile the br uh, browser uh, and beneath what's going on. 
uh, for the automation part I'm not 100% sure maybe it's a bit manual way to check it but at least it's there it's not like it's uh, out of picture okay so is that it like that's the plant plugin or is that the it's 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 a product so it's not plugin uh, but it's a it's from grafana Lab, so it's it's officially by them so okay. yeah thank you any other questions yeah, is there a way that this can be integrated with other existing applications fairly easily? Like, say, I mean, you got a complete dashboard, but you only need one of those uh, graphs to show up in an external application. Is that actually doable? You mean like uh, you have Grafana, but you want to export that dashboard to uh, to other not, like Confluence? Not necessarily the whole dashboard, but. One, one, one particular. particular metric or graph that, that you just that you display in the in your dashboard is there a way that it could be pulled into a different application like uh, you know just a, a, a more traditional fault management tool or NMS so uh, maybe one way is uh, will embedded uh, imba uh, embedding dashboard uh, uh, is an option for you or you prefer something else just to get you your question a bit clear so one way for example I can uh, say that uh, embed my dashboard in other application and then I change the configuration that allow embedded links mm -hmm. then that one particular panel not the whole dashboard but one particular panel will be uh, available in your application and you can view it the only I, the only dr uh, drawback here is that it depends if you are already inside uh, viewing it inside and it's secure then it's fine but if it is public then there might be a security risk mm -hmm. it's a trade-off yeah. Okay. yeah so so on that because you mentioned confluence so you can take one panel from your dashboard and say maybe uptime over the last mm -hmm. last month and pop that on your confluence page and yeah. it'll keep that updated yeah, uh, th that will because uh, once you import only a single panel, not the whole dashboard, just one panel from it, it, it will auto refresh. So uh, that's 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 not a problem. Uh, you can again, you the only catch here is that whether you are okay with using embedded links. Other option, a more safer option, is to use public dashboard. And if we are talking about just sing one single panel, you can just create one single dashboard with a single panel and say. I did one only as a public dashboard, so you don't exp expose the whole dashboard, but one single panel mm -hmm. via public dashboard. Yeah, so that sense. that's like that's an sense. alternative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, quick question. So yeah. I'm I've been developing web stuff for a long time, but I'm really I think bad at debugging it. Mm -hmm. In other words, I, I'd rather build the debug <laughs> and it's a, it's a tr tricky catch 22 but i'm not great at like the browser dev tools and whatnot like how would you say like what do you recommend for somebody like myself who's maybe like a junior developer that doesn't like do i just go get grafana and start to use it for everything is that the proposal or do i still have a dependency on the web like dev tools for basic debugging if you know what i mean so are we talking about debugging grafana or debugging the app web? the app itself so hmm, that's a good question uh, so one way is to use uh, the pyroscope for profiling mm -hmm. obviously th that may help you but not in all the use cases mm -hmm. i can understand your question then right now we don't have any specific specialized uh, web browser debugging tool yeah we have far a uh, faro or flare we say mm -hmm. but uh, it is still like in a bit more uh, initial uh, process I would yeah I don't have a final answer on on this one but is that what I'm choosing between like I'm either debugging in the web browser mm -hmm. and using the dev tools in the browser or I choose something like Grafana for my debugging needs is that the idea so you can definitely use Grafana so it can help you to narrow down the problem because if you go like browser tools then you have to go through each and everything and it, it can consume a lot of time with Grafana for example if you have an application and you say like hey this is where particular event happened you can use traces then with traces you can find out okay at this particular event which library which thing uh, were called off by the application and let's try to track it down 
that can help. But solely for browser, that's a little different story. Like if you want to uh, debug your app from browser, we don't have a sp specialized tool for that yet. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. For the instrumentation like Temple and Traces, uh, if I have a Python server mm -hmm. with a fast API, like, can it automatically wrap those tools, or do I have to still instrument like Temple and Traces so that it pushes data to uh, Temple and? Uh, so. I think it depends on 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 the so in in my case for example uh, I use prom uh, just going one step back okay um, so in my use case I use Prometheus and I use the Prometheus exporters like I use one node exporter for the for the nodes and the other I use MySQL exporters and WordPress exporters. One easy way is that if your application is on Python, definitely there must be uh, a good community. Uh, uh, Prometheus community where similar to Python like uh, exporters are available. You may have to modify but at the very end the core things remain same like to get the CPU usage, to get the basic metrics but uh, when it comes to then for the application part then you have to probably uh, do it a bit manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, I would s strongly suggest like uh, use the community part because there are many like Prometheus has a big community. Some are official uh, exporters, some are non-official, but it doesn't matter. I also use non-official one. There is a, like a little bit catch there. You have to fix a basic part of the code, but or, or sorry of the query, but then it works. Yeah. To gain visibility into a system, does it have to have an agent installed in the system you want to observe? Or does it feed data to Grafana via like a city transfer? So Grafana need a source, and the source uh, in Grafana world is defined as a data source. So if you are maybe running on server A, like a Python or 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 Go GoLang app, you need to maybe just at least install Prometheus on that app on, on that server, and on server B you have Grafana. You tell Grafana that hey, this is where Prometheus is running. I just need the data and. If the permissions are right, it will uh, uh, it will uh, digest all the data and show it in Grafana. So alone, Grafana is like chat GPT. It will not do anything unless you tell something like do a walk or make a fun music or something. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, please. Outside of Prometheus, what's the most common data source that you're seeing? So... Uh, we have uh, a few which are very, very ex extensively used. Uh, the one is obviously Postgres. Postgres is used a lot because Grafana also, like the Grafana default database is SQLite, but we highly recommend to go Postgres if you want to be like on a production level for monitoring your application, then use Postgres. The other is definitely like MySQL, and that's for the traditional database. When we talk about the cloud, then Amazon's uh, services like Lambda or uh, RDS, a lot of those things which are also uh, used a lot. One thing which we uh, seeing a lot of uses is like ClickHouse, ClickHouse TV, which is uh, uh, like a database service. It's, uh, it's an in enterprise one that is also used a lot by the organizations if they are running their infrastructure on it. So are things like Influx? Influx is definitely, yeah. It's, it's a, still, it's still yeah, yeah. commonly used? It is very commonly used. The only, what, what changed a little bit like when Influx moved to Influx version 2 where they changed the whole uh, query. So we see a little bit drop, but it's still, it's very, very highly used. So Influx is used a lot with Telegraph and those things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then last but not least, I have some stickers here. So feel free to grab those uh, stickers, whatever you like about Grafana or one of its products. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.